States of America is about to come under the divine chastisement of God. It's not a game, not even a war. Beyond rain, beyond storm, beyond Katrina, you ain't never seen her. Natural disaster with a meaner demeanor. Beyond danger, when it lies anger, you never witness. No one can make an intelligent decision without being properly informed. This is why this world wants to control the media. This is why media hype can take you up, take you down. So you don't know anymore who's really good because the media can make a wicked man look good and make a good man look evil. That is why. Good evening and assalamu alaikum. You are watching a special edition of the Final Call News Hour. I am your host, Herman Muhammad. Now tonight, the issues that were coming out of our volume 33, number 15. That's the first issue we're going to come out of with the Final Call News uh, paper. What we can do for ourselves in 2014. Black America can be bigger, bolder, and better. Read what advocates, experts, and analysts say we can and must do to make progress this year. That's the first edition we're coming out of. And the next one we're coming out of is volume number 33, number 16, which reads, Justice for Dr. King. Decades after his assassination, a push for information and prosecution of civil rights leaders' killers continue. These are the latest editions of the Final Call newspaper. And again, I am your host, Herman Muhammad. And the Final Call, of course, is the most widely circulated, black-owned and operated publication, not only in this country, but also in the world. It also serves as the communications organ for the Nation of Islam. Uh, for all of you who do not get the Final Call newspaper in your city, and you can pick it up in Denver at the number one barbershop, Supreme Style Barbershop, which I am the proprietor of, located at 7520 East Colfax Avenue. You can pick it up there, or in your local cities, you can pick it up from any of the mighty FOI disseminating the newspaper at any given time. That's the Final Call newspaper um recently i'm proud to announce that the final call launched its digital edition so you can get the final call newspaper digitally by going to digital.finalcall.com and it's beautiful the way that the paper is set up it's set up just like the printed edition except for it's digital so, if you can't get the paper in your city, you can subscribe to the digital Final Call edition at, again, digital.finalcall. And you can get all of the uh, information, all of the articles, just as they appear in the printed edition, in the digital edition. All right, perfect. So, we'll start out. Uh, with this first edition, what we can do for ourselves in 2014. And the first article appears on, and I'm going to go very quickly because we got a lot to cover today. The first article appears on page two of this edition of the Final Call newspaper, and it reads, Black America Braces. Plenty of bad news and bad forecasts. And it's written by our sisters Charlene Muhammad, Starla Muhammad, and Nisa Muhammad. They all 
contributed to this particular article. And it starts out, Black America faces a bleak outlook in 2014 if trends over the last several years, and particularly 2013, are any indication. This daunting projection spans economics, politics, health, education, and violence, according to national facts, figures, and expert analysis. 2014 will unfortunately be a replay of 2013, according to macroeconomist Dr. Algernon Austin. At best, we will see the very slow and very weak economic recovery continue, Dr. Austin told the final call. Now, this article continues to talk about, like, like uh, it pointed out in this first paragraph, about economics, politics, health, education, uh, and violence. Let me just read a piece about uh, health disparities. And again, this article appears on page two. On the health front, 2013 saw several challenges relating to the physical and mental well-being of black America. Statistically... And it uh, continues on page 32. Statistically, while blacks represented less than 13% of the total U.S. population, they topped many lists when it came to obesity, sexually transmitted diseases, certain cancers, heart attacks, strokes, and high blood pressure. Now, this article is, in, is indicative of why we need newspapers and publications like The Final Call and why we need organizations like the Nation of Islam who advocate um, being healthy, living a more productive life. Because in this very same paper on page 28, you can get, um, you'll find the article by the Most Honorable Elijah Muhammad on how to eat to live which will absolutely help to alleviate all of the problems or a lot of the problems that we just pointed out in the beginning of this article. And again, that, that article appears on page two of this edition of the Final Call newspaper. So pick that up. Um, also in this paper, you have the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan's continuation of his series, uh, The Time and What Must Be Done, Dealing with the will, that great mother plane, the power of the will to destroy. And that, and this particular issue is um, part 53 of the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan's year-long series on the time and what must be done. And let me just say this. Let me give a little personal commentary on that particular series. If you have not tuned in, do yourself a huge favor and go all the way back to episode one. Start there and pick up. Keep watching. Keep watching because the minister gets stronger and stronger and bolder and bolder with every single broadcast. And it is absolute truth. And what I want you to do, what we in the Nation of Islam would like for you to do and what we would love for you to do is to actually research Everything that you hear us say on the Final Call News Hour, everything that you hear uh, our student ministers represent on the national webcast on Sundays, and everything that you hear the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan speak in all of his lectures and in this series, The Time and What Must Be Done. You should research and study to find out if what is being said is the truth. Because we don't want to represent to you anything other than the undeniable, undefeatable truth that has been given to us by the most honorable Elijah Muhammad. And so, again, pick up this issue of the Final Call newspaper. What we can do for ourselves in 2014 is full of powerful, powerful articles. I guarantee you. And again, if you can't pick it up, the printed edition, go ahead and get that digital edition. Bam, there it is, digital.finalcall.com. Now, the next issue we're going to deal with, we're going to jump around. We're going to go right into this next particular issue um, dealing with justice for Dr. King. Decades after his assassination, a push for information and prosecution of civil rights leaders, killers, continues. And this article starts on page 3. 
and again this particular article on page three is written again by Sister Charlene Mohammed and Sister Starla, who are both Final Call staffers. And I'll begin by reading the first paragraph. While Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. was lauded for his life, celebrated, and his legacy praised on the day that commemorated his birth, there remained lingering questions about his assassination and whether all the facts around it, his death, are known. It continues on later on in the article. We now know from documents released by the FBI and FBI Director J. Edgar Hoover, who had a pathological hatred of Martin Luther King, so much so that he directed his own agents to break the law repeatedly in going after King and tapping King and having illegal surveillance on King. Journalist Gerald Posner said, on a PBS American Experience roast to Memphis in an excerpt broadcast uh, on January 20th on Democracy Now. James Earl Ray was arrested, pleaded guilty, and was convicted of first-degree murder of Dr. King in 1969. He was sentenced to 99 years in prison. However, Mr. Ray soon recanted, saying he did not kill Dr. King and had years of unsuccessful attempts to get a new trial. He died April 23, 1998 at age 70 stemming from complications of hepatitis C. And that article again appears on page 3. This particular issue of the final column continues on page 32. A very in-depth analysis of who may have killed Dr. King I don't want to reveal everything in the article, but it's very, um, very enlightening. And let me say this too, uh, just in regards to the Martin Luther King Day celebration, which one of the largest celebrations we have is here, right here in, in the mighty city of Denver. And I want to give special shout outs to all of my brothers and sisters who participated in the Marade here. And we call it a Marade because it's a march mixed with a parade and Denver has one of the largest celebrations in the country so shouts out to all of the brothers and sisters who showed up in celebration of the birth anniversary of Dr. Martin Luther King shout outs to all of the FOI who showed up to represent the Nation of Islam my brother Alejandro, brother Ahmad Rasul, brother Aaron X and special shout out to brother Tommy who wanted to make it but couldn't make it. We miss you, brother, but we covered down for you. And again, that, that article starts out on page three. This is an edition of The Final Call. So pick that up if you want to get some in-depth analysis on Dr. King and his assassination. The real story um, and how it appeared. Now we got one more article in this Final Call that I want to deal with and then we'll move on to one last thing and get you up out of here and this particular article appears in the same edition of the final call justice for Dr. King and this appears on page 30 and I have to say this about the final call newspaper and this particular article. It's entitled Twerking, Turning Up, and Black Culture. And it's written by a sister named Sister Layla Muhammad. And she can be reached on Twitter at Layla Muhammad One. That's at L A I L A M U H A M M A D, the number one on Twitter. And again, it's talking about twerking, turning up and black culture and if you've ever seen twerking you know exactly what I'm talking about if you've been on YouTube if you're on YouTube right now you know exactly what I'm talking about but sister <laughs> writes don't get me wrong talking about twerking I absolutely love dancing all kinds from famous Chicago stepping line dancing to salsa merengue house practically anything you can name 
I was born a dancer, danced in troops throughout high school and performed modern dance at my university. So when I heard of this new dance craze, I had to see it for myself. Long before singer Miley Cyrus lit up screens with her controversial twerking, it was already popular in inner cities across America. She goes on. Twerking is the raunchiest, booty moving, hip controlling, muscle isolating, nastiest dance you have ever seen. When I saw videos, I stared at the screen. My mouth flew wide open in awe, hand covering it, eyes closed at times as if I was watching a horror flick, not wanting to miss the next scene, but too afraid to give it my full attention. <laughs> this is a powerful, powerful uh, article written by this sister, and it's written in a portion of the paper that uh, appeared, I think, about a year ago, and it's called Sister Space, and, it's, and it deals strictly with women and women's issues, and again, only a publication like The Final Call would even come up with a concept like this. So pick up this latest edition of The Final Call. I'm going to read this last part because she finishes the article extremely strong. And she talks about, uh, again, twerking, black culture, and what black culture has turned into. And how black culture came about as a result of us being here in slavery. And she continues on in the article, America is like a bad man. He beat you, raped you, called you out your name, abused your children, murdered your babies, poisoned you slowly, told you you were nothing, that no one would ever love you, and threatened to kill you if you left him. But there comes a point in every victim's life when she has to say to herself, I'm leaving, even if I have to die fighting. It starts with separation, first mentally, then physically. At some point, we need an up or down vote. And those who want to stay, stay. Those who want to leave, let's go. But let's rise now to the highest civilization man has ever seen and be proud that we come from a lineage of gods. The powerful. And she continues on. But again, you, you're only going to find articles like this in the final call newspaper and we and make no doubt about it she says let's separate and that's a metaphor for america for a woman and a man but it's truly what we desire as a people in regards to the united states of america and its treatment of us as its once black slaves again pick up this edition of the Final Call newspaper. Now, I want to talk about one last story. And it doesn't appear in the paper, but it's all over the news. Um, and it's dealing with our brother, Richard Sherman, who's the cornerback for the Seattle Seahawks. And I don't have an image for brother. Maybe I do. Hold on. Let me see here. Give me one second. Let me see if I can pull up an image of my brother Richard Sherman. Richard Sherman. There we go. So let me see if I can pull up an image of my brother. All right, so there's an image of my brother, Richard Sherman. And Richard Sherman, of course, is a cornerback for the Seattle Seahawks. And he made some, they were really off-the-cuff remarks in the heat of the aftermath of the most important game in his life playing in the NFC Championship where his team, the Seattle Seahawks, advance to the Super Bowl world. They will play the world-famous Denver Broncos. we in Denver. Yay, yay. Um, <laughs> but he said some interesting things. But let me let you judge for yourself because we got it. Thank you so much, Richard. Let me ask you the final play. Take me through it. Well, I'm the best corner in the game. When you try me with a sorry receiver like Crabtree, that's the result you're going to get. Don't you ever talk about me. 
who was talking about you. Crabtree, don't you open your mouth about the best. Or you, I'm going to shut it for you real quick. L.O.B. All right, before... And Joe, back over to you. Joe, thank <laughs> So, Bella Herman, back over to you. <laughs> so, yeah, so Richard Sherman in the heat of battle um, playing the highest level of professional football that you could play in the National Football League said some things about uh, uh, a receiver named Crabtree on the 49ers. And uh, like I said, it was in the heat of a battle. And um, subsequent to that, man, the Twitterverse went nuts. Um, you all know this story. The, the, the internet went wild. They were calling brother uh, a thug. All sorts of deplorable, horrible names, uh, just because of what he said in 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 the heat of battle. And you know, brother Richard um, Sherman, by Allah's grace, is not just a phenomenal athlete. If I could defend him, he also graduated second in his class in high school, and. He graduated from Stanford University. So not only is he a phenomenal athlete, but he's a brilliant black man. And subsequent to that, he had other interviews where he said, you know, he explained himself and he apologized for what he said about the brother in the heat of the moment. But he said, uh, in reference to his remarks, that they were in the heat of the moment, but in regards to those remarks that came after from others about him, those weren't in the heat of the moment. People literally went to their computers and typed out some of the vilest things that you could possibly say about a brother. And it's because of the way he looks. It's because of the bravado that he shows on the football field. It's because of the confidence that he has in himself as a man. The bottom line is the so-called dominant society, which is quickly diminishing and shrinking, feels threatened by an intelligent, strong black man. And they've pitted the really the whole world against the brother um, and I think on purpose but we'll see how that plays out but I think uh, and it's died down a little bit going into it but they keep sticking a microphone in his face hoping that um, he'll say something else <laughs> but that's just my two cents on brother uh, Richard Sherman I just want to say I'm proud of you black man um, for standing up and, and, and defending yourself uh, vehemently and adequately showing that you got something up there as well as that athletic prowess. It's a beautiful, beautiful thing to see a black man be a black man. So may Allah bless Brother Richard Sherman. But go Broncos. We still want you to lose, brother. Sorry about that. <laughs> So that that that's uh, that's um, that's it in regards to these issues of the final call. We can go into more and more of the stories, but again, I, I just want to have you. If you didn't get these issues, make sure you pick them up. That one, that one, and if you can't get the printed edition, make sure you go to go to digitalfinalcall.com. But we got one more order of business before we get out of here. And that is the economic blueprint of the most honorable Elijah Muhammad and his star student, the honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan, which of course was launched again at the Holy Day of Atonement. Um, the honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan's First spoke it up at Savior's Day 2013 where he talked about donating a nickel a day. And here's how it works. If 16 million of our working class people donated 5 cents a day, that's 35 cents a week, 
that's a dollar forty a month that is eighteen dollars and twenty cents a year at the end of a year if 16 million of us did that we would have a whopping 291 million dollars now in Denver we want to make a special uh, effort to make this happen so we're cordially inviting all of you to an event that we're having uh, in order to push and propagate the economic blueprint of the most honorable Elijah Muhammad and Minister Farrakhan and that is going to be a dinner that we have on February the 8th right here locally at a space called the Kamsi Event Center. The Kamsi Event Center is located at 10 190 Mountain View Boulevard in Aurora, Colorado, 810. For information, you can call 720-365-7275. This, at this event, we're going to have a dinner. We're going to have entertainment in the way of music. And we're going to have a webcast message from the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan. So, please join us on this day. The tickets are $25. A portion of it will go towards the economic blueprint, of course, ending poverty of want, donating that money to www.economicblueprint.com and another portion will go to Denver Study Group locally so that we can help establish the nation of Islam here in the city of Denver. We have Muslims here in the city of Denver. We have followers of the Honorable Elijah Muhammad and Minister Farrakhan here in Denver. But we really want to establish an ummah or a community where people can come, where the flag can be flown and you all can uh, participate in the program programs of the Honorable Elijah Muhammad and so that's that's our mission so I want to show that to you one more time so that you get that information and make sure that you're there you can contact me as well and I'll give you my number before we get out but again that's at the Kamsi Event Center 10 190 Montview Boulevard, Aurora, Colorado, 810 is the zip. You could call 720-365-7275 for more information. And this is in 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 uh, to promote Muhammad's economic blueprint, ending poverty and want. Again, it's gonna be dinner, uh, entertainment, music, and a special address webcast message from the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan. So come and help us lift up uh, Muhammad's economic blueprint and help us get the city of Denver up so that the Nation of Islam can be represented properly in this city. Now that's just about it ladies and gentlemen, brothers and sisters, man. It's been a pleasure um, bringing you this broadcast this evening. And I got to plug myself because this is an, an individually funded endeavor. This show has been brought to you by Supreme Star Barbershop and astar2.com. And what I'd like for you to do, brothers and sisters, is go on to the website astar2.com and enter into our blog. There's a, a space on the site where it says enter our blog and blog with us and listen to what it is that we're saying. Uh, the latest blog that we did was one on um, legalized marijuana and the walking dead caused a little bit of controversy in the city but that's all right it, it, it don't hurt none but um support supreme style barbers which is your brother herman muhammad my my business and support the final call news paper support the final call news hour support the Nation of Islam. Watch the webcast on Sunday. There's so much that you can do. Pick up your final call whenever you see the Mighty Mighty FOI out in the streets propagating 
the uh, mission and the word of the Most Honorable Elijah Muhammad. And uh, stay black, stay strong. Follow me on on. Like Supreme Style Barbershop on Facebook.com and follow me at Brother Herman on Twitter.com. So listen, we love y'all. We out. Stay black. Stay strong. And remember, if you don't stand for something, you'll fall for anything. You're watching the Final Call News Hour. I'm your man, Herman Muhammad. Peace. And we out. This here change, permanently rearrange Back to where you came from Oh, you don't get it Oh, you the fittest It don't matter, it don't matter Anybody can get it Everybody gon' feel it From hell to the ceiling Whole states wiped out Killing by the million What happened to the buildings And all these children Don't get mad, it's God doing the killing Weapons of mass destruction No power you can't prepare for the shock of the hour.